Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Damien36, and we are in part 4 of the Yu Gi Oh! Forbidden Memories Let's Play. I just finished grinding cards for a set of the first, and these are the cards that I have acquired. Some pretty good cards, very good. Uh, will make your life a lot easier in the long run when we start this tournament. So, let's go back into the campaign where we fight our first match against a anonymous and very known character in the Yu Gi Oh! anime series. It is. Rex Raptor. It's been a while, Yugi. Guess you're gonna be watching me in the finals. I don't think I sound like him at all, but you know, I'm trying. Shut up, I'm trying, damn it. <laughs> you don't appreciate anything I do. So, we're in the tournament right now. People are a lot harder, have a lot more stronger cards, fuse more often, so be wary of that. As you can see, our Rex Raptor's first move is a three-card fusion, and he kicks my card's ass. <laughs> so clearly, it's it's tougher. Clearly. So just a little recap: we were in Egypt in part three, and we shattered the Millennium Puzzle, stopping Haitian from obtaining it, and this caused us to get trapped inside the puzzle, along with Simon Muron, and now we have. Tra travels years to the future, and now we're con taking control of a new Yugi who has the original Millennium Puzzle in his possession. So that'll come into play later in the story, later in this part, actually. And now we're dueling into a tournament for of some sort. Uh, it's not really clear why Yugi and Joey have joined the tournament. It's not really clear why anybody has joined the tournament, really. However. There is a reason for everybody being together in one moment, and that will be explained in part 5. So, please stick around, please like, favorite this video, and subscribe if you don't mind. I know I don't like, I don't like saying this during the video. I usually say it at the end, but I really gotta get some stubs, guys. Yeah, I really appreciate you subbing and liking the video. If it's, if it's not too much trouble, thank you, and, you know, back to this gameplay now. I'm sorry, I won't... I won't do that ever again. It's just, I, I kind of need views. I'm Instead, I'm going to just put an annotation in the corner saying to like and sub. And I think that's a better idea than just saying it. But anyway, we formed Thousand Dragon. And this is a new dragon you haven't seen this before. Very powerful combination of Time Wizard and, and any other dragon uh, that's under 2400 attack. Very powerful. Uh, good card. And I again, I have to stress that dragons are your best friend in this game. You gotta form your, bait, your your deck around a dragon type. I'm not saying you have to, but it's the easiest way to win. So, we beat Rex Raptor, and now we're on to match number two. And I'm not gonna animate Taya's voice, because uh, she usually says one line and then the exact same thing. What do you want to do? So, I'm not gonna animate Taya's voice. I'm gonna animate Tiana's voice later on, but now we're on to Weevil Underwood. Hehehe, <laughs> it's only fair to tell you, you ain't got a chance. My army of insects will make mincemeat out of you. <laughs> Man, I have to do so many voices for this Let's Play, it's unbelievable. <laughs> if you're familiar with the Yu-Gi-Oh! animated series, then you're gonna immediately know who Weevil Underwood is and his strategy. He loves to use bug monsters, bug type, insect, whatever you want to call them. However, in this game, no one really has a strategy in this game. There isn't a specific monster type strategy. So he just told us that his insects are going to make mince meat out of us. You can see right now, he's using Queen of Autumn Leaves. Does that look like an insect po uh, monster? No, I almost said Pokemon there. Shit. <laughs> but no. He doesn't use bug play. Uh, I was going to say it again. Damn it. Insect monsters. There is no strategy related to types in this game. Really, all the opponent has and what they try and do is overpower you. That's it. The more, the more, whoever has the most powerful monster on the field will win. Unless you have some crazy traps and magics, but we'll get to that later. That's when we start using them more often. As for this duel and the upcoming two or three duels, just form the strongest monster and you'll basically try and win. That's just the, basically the only strategy you can do is get the strongest monster and it should be easy picking so the game the game itself doesn't have a lot of strategy to it it's a really basic game 
it's a basic Yu-Gi-Oh type game, but I love it. I, I love this game. I wanna I wanted to LP this for a while, and now I'm finally am. So, hooray for me, right? <laughs> So I wanted to ask you guys a question related to you, your Forbidden Memories. Have you ever played it? And if you didn't play it, why not? And if you have played it, have you ever beaten it? Because I know a lot of people who've played this game and they couldn't beat it just simply because they couldn't acquire the cards they needed to beat the last stretch of bosses at the end. So that's just a true testament to how hard this game can be and how much grinding you need to do in order to beat the game. I myself have beaten it about... I don't know, 20 plus times. That's how much I love this game. That's how much I love playing it. It, To me, grinding is just a... It's a step on, on, on a set of stairs. And there's no problem with me. I don't have a problem grinding. And, you know, that's what that's why I've been able to beat this game, right? Because I have the patience to do it. So we beat Weevil Underwood. And I look forward to reading you guys' comments based around this game. I'm gonna save. You're gonna see. I save every every duel after this. So, I think. Yep. The next duel we're gonna face. The next duelist we're gonna face is my Valentine. And I am not animating her voice simply because I I have a very deep voice. So I definitely cannot do my Valentine. I have a hard enough time doing Taya. So. Sorry guys. You're not gonna hear me sound like a girl. So. Get your fill somewhere else. Go go watch Fred. <laughs> Cause that guy's a girl. <laughs> Actually, no, don't go watch Fred because just watch my videos instead. Damn it, watch my videos instead. <laughs> I'm not gonna ask you guys to, uh, <clears throat> you know, you you know what I'm talking about. You you know what I'm talking about. You you know what you have to do with that mouse and that left click button. You know what you have to do. You know. <laughs> but anyways. I guess I'll talk about the strategy that my Valentine has. Her strategy is to not have a strategy. And you're going to see that with every duelist in this game. There is no strategy to it. It's just the strongest cards. And I'm saying this again and again. But I have to re-emphasize on it. You're going to see a lot of the same process of each duel. I hope it doesn't get boring. I don't think it gets like as repetitive and boring. Just It, it keeps looping over and over again. The duels... The more I get into later in the game, the faster the duels become. So, because the more strong cards I get and the more life points I can inflict, so I can beat the opponents a lot faster because I take more life points per each turn. So, it, I don't think it'll turn boring. I think four turns per duel is it's like a minute, right? So, later on in the in the, the let's play it's gonna get a lot quicker it's gonna be good the story is i love the story i love how it is the whole aspect of beating Shin and how to get the millennium items back it's it's cool i like it so now we've finally defeated my valentine and now we're at the card shop once again you play a tough game yugi what do you want to do that was terrible see i can't do girl voices i'm sorry so we're gonna return to the title and I'm going to grind out with my Valentine to get some pretty good cards. And the cards are... Well, I'm not going to read, uh, read them all out. But the ones you need to keep in mind are the Queen of Autumn Leaves, La Jin, and Crawling Dragon. Because those are the three cards that I'm going to be using the most. Because they're the most effective in my deck. La Jin and Queen are very strong. And Crawling Dragon helps me form Twin Edith Thunder Dragon really easy. So we're going to leave this card shop. And we're going to duel Band of Keith now. And I said before that Bandit Keith in the animated series had an emphasis on machine-type monsters. In this game, he does not. And you can see how easily I take him out. So, yeah. <laughs> so I guess I'll tell you guys another Yu-Gi-Oh! related story that has happened to my life. Uh, in elementary school, everybody was into Yu-Gi-Oh! Everybody had their own cards. And everybody had a lot of fun dueling each other at recess. We had tournaments and all that stuff. It was really cool. We even played for cards sometimes, which was uh, pretty neat. I usually won, so that's why I like that idea. But uh, in the animated series, there were things that the duelists used, like Yugi and all of them. They used dual discs to duel, right? And before this was before the dual discs toys actually came out. So we thought it was really cool. The dual discs was an awesome thing, and we wanted to do that ourselves. So we had to make up a way to do that without having dual discs. 
So what we did is you can buy desk deck boxes for your cards, basically, and what they do is they just protect your cards, like the deck that you have, so you don't have to hold them and they don't have to be they, they don't have to get lost or something. You can have them all in this like, tiny box. Right? It's just a box, right? So what we what we thought of is we put the deck box between or in our sleeve. And we have our deck in our deck box so that when you need to take a card, you just open your deck box and you just take out a card, right? And then you can play the card like underneath. So you put your card in between your hand and the deck box. It was a really funny idea. I, I still think it was hilarious. Some kids dropped their cards on the floor and some of them blew away. So clearly it wasn't a good idea. So anyway, that was a quick little short Yu-Gi-Oh! related story. We finally beat Bandit Keith. And now we are going to go to the card shop once again because that's the pattern. You duel, then you go to the card shop. But instead of dueling the next person, we're going to have uh, another cutscene with Yugi and Joey. So, see you back when I can speak normally. Hi, Yugi. Hey, you're winning. Yeah, how about you? Me? Well, I ain't been eliminated yet. Maybe this time I'll face you in the finals. I hope so, but... Huh. Huh, what's wrong, Yugi? Over there, it's shoddy. What? We meet again, Yugi. What are you doing here? You looking for something? I was summoned by Yugi's Millennium Idol. The Millennium Puzzle? That is correct. My own Millennium Idol is reacting as if it wants to be here, here and now. I believe that every last Millennium item is gathered here at the tournament. My mission is to discover the secret of these items. That is what brought me here. Shoddy, I had a weird dream about the Millennium Puzzle. There was another guy like me in the dream, locked in the puzzle in another world. It was a really strange dream. I see. That might have something to do with Yami Yugi, your doppelganger. My doppelganger? Yugi, have you ever thought about meeting your dark twin? Me meet him? And how's he gonna do that? I can use my Millennium Key to open your mind, Yugi. By delving deep into your mind, you can probably meet the other you that lies within. Yami Yugi was born from the power of the Millennium Puzzle. He emerges from within you. The dream you have. Maybe he is trying to tell you something. I think this might be the time to meet him and talk. I see what you're saying. I'll go see him if you're willing to help me. Okay, here, touch my Millennium Key. Now, close your eyes, relax, open your mind. Yugi, are you alright? Uh, yeah. Did it work? Did you meet him? I met him. But we only spoke briefly. He told me he was a prince trapped in the puzzle a long time ago. He said he had to get back to his own world. He asked me to help him get back. But I don't know how. Yugi, what's that you got in your hand? Huh? This card! He gave me this card in my mind's world! He told me to use it to free him, to send him back to his own world! What is this, Shadi? I'm afraid I don't know. But it probably has something to do with the Millennium Item. Six playing cards, I don't get it. It's time to head back. 
Why don't we think on this later? We got some duels to fight. See you in part five.